to make our reference from. I'll also record this session so that those who will join us late will also be able to uh, to look at them. Now, I want us to start with the earnings uh, per share. That is our topic for today. Now, earnings per share uh, is simply defined as the it, it can be defined as a, an amount of earnings for a period that is attributable to each ordinary or equity shares the earnings that you can attribute to each ordinary or equity shares now the earnings per share of an enterprise whose ordinary shares or maybe the potential ordinary shares are traded can be calculated in a, a form that we will be looking at in maybe our later slides so the potential ordinary shares are simply securities which are not uh, presently equity shares but have the potential of causing additional shares to be issued in the future and we have uh, examples like uh, the equity instruments uh, that can be convertible into ordinary shares then we can also have the share warrants and options we can also have the shares which uh, would have been issued upon satisfaction of certain conditions now when both the parent company and uh, its consolidated financial statements are presented then uh, the information that is called for in respect of the earnings per share needs to be presented only on the basis of consolidated financial statements now the earnings per share can be uh, calculated and uh, the earnings that are calculated can be in two forms we can have the basic earnings a share and uh, the diluted earnings per share so we can start by looking at the basic earnings per share basic earnings per share this is the, the simplest uh, form basic uh, earnings per share now to calculate the basic earnings per share we will take the net profit or loss you can take uh, sorry for my handwriting there net profit or loss remember a company can either have uh, the profit or loss and this should be only one that is attributable the net profit or loss that is attributable to earning a share as what you 
take, then we divide this by one Wanos is simply weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding. Weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding. So this is how we will uh, calculate the basic earnings per share. So this is for basic. We take the net profit or loss that is attributable to earnings per share, then divide by one loss, and uh, one loss is simply the weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding now the net profit or loss attributable to ordinary shares this one here we can arrange it by first of all taking the net profit the net profit or the net loss for the period net profit or loss for period or that and then uh, we less we less the preference dividend you subtract preference dividend that is paid Do that a less difference. So what will get there? The difference there. Now what will be net profit or loss that is attributable to earnings per share? So I hope we are uh, clear there that when we are uh, uh, calculating the net profit or loss attributable to ordinary shares, we take the net profit or loss and then we less the preference dividend. We less the preference dividend. Now we have to note that uh, one, the amount of preference dividend that is uh, deducted from the net profit for the period is uh, A, the amount of any preference dividend or, or on non-cumulative preference shares declared in respect of the period or it can also be the amount of preference dividend that is required for cumulative preference shares for the period so that will always be be shown in each and uh, every case so you don't need to worry about the preference dividend that is deducted from either the net profit or the net loss from the period. So I think uh, if you have uh, downloaded the notes, can we look at example one? Example one, it is clearly marked in your, in your notes there. Assume that uh, 
a company had 2 million ordinary shares outstanding as at 1st January 2001. Then we are told that uh, on 31st May 2001, the company issued 800,000 new ordinary shares for cash. Then we are required to calculate the weighted average number of shares outstanding during the period. Weighted average number of shares outstanding during the period. So please, can you confirm whether you are able to see example one, please? Then we continue because I want us to move to together as a group. If you can see example one that I'm talking about this so that we continue. Are you able to see our example one? Okay, then we can continue with the solution. So we, 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 you are supposed to download uh, the notes. The example one is there. So in example one, we are told that we assume that a company had 2 million ordinary shares. Maybe I can also post it in our discussion forum so that the others who have not uh, downloaded are also able to see what we are talking about. Okay, so that is the that is the example that I want us to look at. So remember, we have first uh, January two thousand and one. The company issued. Uh, the, the, assume that a company had not issued. A company had two million ordinary shares outstanding as at first. January, and then uh, on 31st, on 31st uh, May 2001, the company issued 800,000 new ordinary shares for cash. So we are told to calculate the weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding or issued during the period. So we have two periods. The first period is between 1st January uh, to 31st first January to 31st May. And then the second period is 1st June First June to thirty first December. First June to thirty first December. So those are the the two periods. Remember before the eight hundred thousand were issued on thirty first May. The number of shares that we were outstanding were two million. There were two million shares. Remember, this is supposed to be for our year. So between first January and thirty uh, first May. The, to know the number of shares in between there, we'll now multiply this by fraction. The period between January and January 1st and uh, 31st May, so that is 
five months. Five months. So, so this will be two million times five out of seven. What will that give us? Two million uh, times five out of seven. Two million times five out of seven. What that give us? How many shares? So that should give us, uh, if you multiply this, this will be 833, 3, 3, 3 shares, 833 Yes, between that period. Then we have between 1st June to 31st December to get the number of months in between here. Then this will be seven months in between. Remember the total shares. The total shares between this period will now be the two million. Uh, if uh, the total number of shares in the particular year from January to December, from January to December will be the two million plus the eight hundred additional shares issued on. We will now be million two million. Sorry, this is not five over seven, but five out of sorry for that. So this will be two million eight hundred thousand. times the number of months there, which is seven out of 12. So if again, you need to do the calculation. You need to get the calculation instead out of Imani Gishui, one million. Okay, Rosemary, the same. So that is between 1st June to 31st December. Then you all have to now add the two for us to get the weighted average. So can you add the two there? Add the two there.
so if you add we can get two million four six 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 so you bet and be that so that is that is correct so that is how we can get the weighted average number of shares out during a particular remember to know the months and then you give you after getting the months you divide it by 12 in each case because the total shares were the whole Any question before we move to our next example? Okay, if there is no question, then we can move to example two. Again, is on if you have downloaded the work there, but I can also post it. So, example two, there we have been the consolidated uh, income statement of ABC for the year ABC for the year ended 30th June 2002 is as follows with the profit from ordinary activities after tax less minority interest, then less extraordinary loss, less preference dividend, and then we less ordinary dividend. Therefore, retained earnings that we have there is 364,000. Then we are told that the company has 750 million shares company has 750 million shares whose value so every share is five shillings then we are required to calculate the earnings per share we are told to calculate the earnings per share now remember we said that uh, to calculate the earnings here. So maybe the solution there. The solution, the, we say that the EPS, the earnings share, given by the net profit. In our case, we don't have a loss, so that will be net profit. That is attributable. Profit attributable earnings, and we divide these by one. Okay.
Okay, I hope now you can hear me, Masharia. Okay, so I'm saying that uh, for example, two that we have, we have been told to calculate the the earnings per share. So the earnings per share is given by the net profit attributable to ordinary shares. Net profit attributable to net profit attributable to ordinary shares divided by the one of the weighted average number of divided by the weighted average number of shares. Now, if you look at our case, if you look at our case, we have the earnings that is attributable to ordinary shares will be now the profit, the profit that we have less the preference dividend. So that one is 381,500. You can see 381,500. I hope now you can hear me. Uh,
Now, then you divide this by Uh, no way. the number of we are dividing by And please note how we got the 381500. Remember, we said this is earnings attributed to ordinary shares. ordinary shares. So they are simply the earnings after you have deducted the preference dividends. Earnings after you have deducted the preference dividends. So those are the earnings that will be attributable to ordinary shares. So what is the quotient if you divide 381 500 by 750 million okay so that will be zero yes bet langat does okay zero point zero Zero, zero, there are three zeros. Kimani Gishui, five, zero, eight, seven. Okay, it is eight, six, six, but eight, seven. That's okay. So that will be the earnings for every ordinary share remember we had the total number of shares as 750 million okay yes credit is also okay you have you have 0 0.00051 which is okay you have rounded off that's okay any question in example two? Any question in our example two? Remember guys, this, this was, the amounts were in thousands. Maybe we make a correction somewhere. The amounts, if you look at our example two, if you look at example two, those amounts are all in thousands. So we are supposed to add three zeros there. Sorry for that. I think I was not keen enough. So this won't change this much. So instead of this, we'll now have, because of the three zeros, we'll have zero point, uh, point, uh, Sorry, sorry for that. We'll have zero point uh, five 
zero eight seven. Please note that, please, because if you look at your example two, all those amounts are in thousand. So for kubende, kubende yours will be zero point five one if you round off zero point five one. That is if you round off. That is there. So please note of what we had forgotten to include. The amounts there were in in thousand. So three eighty one five hundred should be three eighty one five hundred thousand. Then we divide it by seven hundred and fifty million. Any questions so far before we look at our next example? Any question? There's no question, then we can do example three, and I hope you have your example three there well. Now, in example three, we are looking at the changes in equity capital during the year. So we are told that uh, the issued and fully paid share capital of company ABC limited on 1st of January 001, comprised of uh, 400,007 per cent per shares, 7%. Uh, that you collect, that, that should be preference shares, 7% preference shares. So maybe correct that. Not per share, but uh, preference shares, seven percent preference uh, shares of one killing per share. So that will be four hundred thousand. Then three million ordinary shares of one killing per share. That is three million total is three million four hundred thousand. Then we are told that on first. Uh, September 2001, a further 600,000 ordinary shares were issued and fully paid for in cash. The post-tax net profit for the period to 31st December 2001 was 197,600. So maybe for those who have not downloaded the notes, I can also post this in our discussion forum so that you get to know what we are talking about. Okay, so that is what we have there, that uh, the company had uh, a full share capital of uh, consisting of preference shares and ordinary shares. Then we were told that uh, a further 600,000 ordinary shares were issued and fully paid for in cash on 1st September. We have been given the post-tax net profit for the period to 31st December 2001 as 197,600. Then we are told to compute the earnings per share. So I think we can solve that solution. Now, to solve this, first of all, we have to, we have to get the net profit attributable to ordinary shares. Net profit attributable to ordinary shares. So to get that, we'll first of all get the net profit that is attributable to preference shares. Or we get the preference dividend first. So how will we uh, 
sorry sorry preference dividend how will we get the preference dividend now we if you look at our problem there we have been told that we have 400,000 preference dividend and for the 400,000 preference share sorry and the interest or the dividend on the shares is 7%. 7%. So what you need to do is to get the 7% of 400,000. That will be 7 over 100. times 400,000. So can you get that? Okay, Kimani Gishi, that's correct. Deritu, Rosemary, Bet Langat, 28,000. Kilu Benjamin, keep quiet like that. Ellie Steve, that is okay. So once we've got the dividend, then now the net profit that will be attributable to ordinary shares now. Net profit attributable to ordinary shares. We will not get it by taking the net profit by taking the net profit uh, or the post the, the net profit for the period which we have so what we want is this net profit attributable to ordinary shares attributable to ordinary Yes, let me just use OS. So we will first of all take the post tax, post tax net profit. Post tax net profit, which we have as 197,600. Post tax uh, net profit, which is one. 7600 then now we less the preference dividend less the preference dividend and the preference dividend we have calculated that as 28000 So if you subtract that, what will we have difference there? Okay, when they read to 169,600. Mwai Masharia, 16600. Can you check? Because the others are getting 169,600. Masharia. Check, check, whatever you've not done correctly. Okay, thank you. It is typing now. You have confirmed. Kilo Benjamin, Rotich Komen, Moody, Kipkoech, Lagat, Eli Steve. So uh, the net profit that is attributable to ordinary shares will be 169,600. Now, once we've determined that we need to also get the weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding. So we need to work out the one-offs. 
and as we said the one ounce is simply weighted average number of ordinary shares outstanding now if you look at our problem if you look at our problem we were told that uh, a further 600,000 ordinary shares were issued on 1st September. Remember, up to 31st August, the outstanding number of ordinary shares were 3 million up to that point. So we need to get the one -offs. So we have between 1st January, just the same way we determined the first case, to 31st August. First January to August. Then the other preceding period is from 1st September. when now the additional 600,000 shares were issued to now 31st December. What we do is to determine the time period between 1st January and 31st August. That is a period of eight months. And between 1st September to 31st December, that is a period of four months. So after this point, the total number of years were three million, so we are going to have three million three million times now eight out of twelve. So we get that. Then up to this, three million plus additional six hundred so that will be three million six hundred thousand shares. Then times now four fellows. So again, we work out that. So I'm waiting for working. Three million times, okay, Kimani Gishui, the first one should be two million. Two million. Two M shares. Bet Lagat, the little Rosemary, the same. Now the other one. Uh, three million six hundred thousand times four out of twelve. That is one point two million. Okay, let me just write it at that. One point two million. Bet Lagat Kimani Gishui. That's okay. Okay, if we add these two, we have point. Two million. So our one is three point two million shares. Now, once we have this, now our earning, our earning equal to the net profit that is attributable to ordinary shares, which we got as 169,600. Then we by one ounce, which is 3,200,000. Yes. That question 
if you divide the two, so if you divide that, that will be shillings zero point zero five three so zero point zero five three so that is okay mumudi zipora rotich komen kubende austin and keep quiet lagat the same we are getting the same value so we are correct so this can be also be approximately in terms of sense. this can be this can be five point three cents but there is no harm even leaving it at zero point zero three shillings there is no problem so a question up to that point not not weighted over the number of ordinary shares but how we are getting the earnings per share how we are getting the earnings per share now if there is no question i would like us now to stop there with our live session then we go to our discussion forum discussion forum and uh, look at uh, an example there which i want you to attend so that we know whether we are together and uh, you can ask any question so kindly let us move to our discussion forum and i expect that everyone is going to participate in the discussion forum so have a nice uh, time next but uh, continuing our class at the discussion forum thank you